Hello and a very good evening. You're watching Rajya Sabha Television with me, Frank Pereira. Now, fighting inflation was high on the BJP's agenda to fight the 2014 elections and fixing agriculture problems in is something that it will have to focus on. Now, the BJP lists reform of the APMC Act as one of the things it will do under the heading Agriculture Productive, Scientific and Rewarding. While abolishing the Act may be too drastic a step, experts agree that farmers should be free to sell to whomever they want and retailers should be free to choose where to buy from. On the big picture today, we'll understand what APMC is and whether it is relevant in today's day and age. Do we need some kind of a reform? Now, joining me in the studio today to discuss precisely this, I have with me Tajamul Haq, former chairman, Commission for Agricultural Cost and Prices. Welcome. And also joining us is uh, Himanshu Watts, senior journalist, Economic Times, uh, MJ Khan, of the BJP and uh, representing the Congress today, we have with us uh, Brijesh Kalapa as well. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being a part of the show today. Uh, I'd like to start with you, Mr. Tajamul Haq, and ask you, of course, why don't you explain to us what really the APMC Act is? Mm, yeah, if you just, this is, of course, the very basic kind of thing, but the Agriculture Produce Marketing Control hmm. Act was basically designed long ago to eliminate the exploitation of farmers by middlemen. Yes. Some established, some regulated markets where things will be, you know, graded, standardized, and farmers can sell it there and, and they will get a regulated, I mean, reasonable price. I mean, in fact, the whole agriculture price policy, uh, if you see, the, it was implemented basically by the regulated markets, particularly in the case of rice, wheat, and some other important crops, uh, like, like as you have in Punjab, Haryana, those mandis. These are all regulated mandis. But what has happened over time is that the very purpose is, uh, seems to have been defeated. Mm. Like uh, farmers get exploited there, there are malpractices and corruption, there is multiplicity of taxes and fees which create hurdles in the way of you know, uh, um, a movement of grains and other commodity, agricultural commodities. And farmers are not allowed to sell it in the open market. Yes. And uh, this means there is some kind of monopoly or restrictive practices. Mm. And uh, as a result, what has happened in the country in general, uh, there is no alternative marketing system developed and there is no encouragement to private um, you know, entrepreneurs mm. to develop markets or invest in market taking facilities for, for, for oh, the farmers could take advantage of that. Okay. So these are the problems actually. Okay, currently. I'm going to take out a few keywords from, uh, from what you just said, of course, and take that to Himanshu Watts, of course. It, it's something that has been... Uh, that's lasted for a long time now. It was drafted long time ago. The question really is, is it relevant in today's day and age, Himanshu Watts? See, I agree with what the first panelist said. Uh, you know, it started with the best of intentions, but it has really outlived its utility. What you have is, uh, you know, illiterate or semi-literate farmers who are not market savvy, who are facing with a buyer's cartel. A mandi has really become a cartel of those middlemen and those agents who are licensed to operate. It's not possible for a new person to enter that without very high entry charges and huge entry barriers. So th there's no doubt about the fact that uh, APMC has outlived its utility. Mm. Mm. Uh, I wouldn't say it needs to be crushed completely, but its monopoly must be ended. Okay, its monopoly must... There's must... too fat a margin between... The yes, go on. Yeah, it has to be broken. You know, you, you can't be forcing a farmer to sell only in this place. Hmm. And the other thing, you know, which people need to bear in mind, and it's a fact that's not been highlighted, that just changing the act is not enough. Yes. And <clears throat> just the government's intention is not enough. And I say this because, you know, sometime in the 90s, I remember on a trip to Chandigarh, and one of the officials there in the agri department was telling me that they started something called an apni mandi, where farmers used to come from, you know, 30, 40 kilometers in their tractors and trolley, and they were given a space in the city to sell. Now, the f for the first week or two, it was a big hit. But in the third week onwards, the vested interest, they started selling fruits and vegetables outside this apni mandi at mm. half the rates, mm. where farmers could not sell at a loss. So they had to drive back all the way with their produce. Okay. And within two weeks, the whole initiative was crushed. So the point I'm making is they are very deeply entrenched and deep-pocketed vested interests. So it's not easy to fight them. And my suggestion to the government and to the authorities is that, you know, don't just stop at saying that we lend this act and the monopoly. You, you also have to gear up and fight 
the fight back from the vested interest okay let me let me take that to the bjp spokesperson bjp represent the person representing the bjp on the panel today why don't you respond to that i mean don't just stop there you need to we need to see some hard reforms as far as the apmc act is concerned no i agree with the speaker uh, when bjp in its uh, manifesto has listed down uh, reforming apmc act it is not either repealing it or not uh, just reforming in a limited way of hmm. uh, either curtailing the role of middlemen and so when the act has to be revisited it has to be revisited in its holistic form uh, all the development that are taking place in the post production side that has to be looked into essentially we have to keep the interests of the consumers in mind as well as to protect the interests of the farmers which means today look at the gap if the year round average of tomato the producer gets is rupees 4 then the consumer pays is rupees 16 400% difference hmm. Hmm. now how to ensure that farmer gets instead of 400 percent 800 uh, 8 rupees and uh, instead of consumer paying 16 rupees can he pay 12 rupees hmm. which means the entire chain has to be made more efficient hmm. and how are you going to do that uh, that is important see four five aspects are to be looked at administrative measures are important hmm. but since government has just taken over it has its commitment so legislative measures have to be looked at hmm. so the statement of mr jetly that fruits and vegetables should be delisted from apmc is one important but what is required is that whole lot of new development that have taken place globally and also in india how they are to be catered in order to ensure again the two things consumer pays less and producer gets more hmm. application it uh, has to be introduced so that role of middleman energy efficiency has to be enhanced hmm. today if you look at the uh, gaps in the post production in the marketing in the transportation entire logistics and at the selling point itself in azadpur mandi if you look at some uh, thing they do under handkerchief uh, hanky panky things they do and producer after putting in some four months of time energy efforts and risk he gets four rupees and these flows in few minutes time they make five rupees hmm. a kg so you know where the that problem is so you know where the problem is we understand that hmm. uh, today there was an article by ex uh, chairman of uh, cscp i am hmm. happy that uh, dr t hak is here he is eminent economist and uh, himself has been the chairman uh, he listed that uh, you know 22 uh, commodities which are monitored on daily basis uh, for whole sale price index uh, that has to be enlarged to include eggs and to include uh, some fruits fruits are currently not included in that important thing is that how the private sector role has to be enhanced okay okay choices have to be created now farmers awareness programs are to be carried out entrepreneurship development in farm sector has to be encouraged all these developments once in place private mandis to be set up now look at the retailers they are looking at the quality which is not available in the current okay. mandis system. fair enough you made your point let me take that to brijesh kalapa of course uh, brijesh the problem really is of course if you look at it if you look at amending the act as such the apmc act whom is it going to impact the most it's going to impact the traders who are the traders at the end of the day the traders consist of the traditional vote bank of the bjp so how serious do you think the bjp is going to be in actually amending this act well uh, frank i think uh, everybody knows uh, what the problems are hmm. and uh, whether the government has the resolve uh, to sort this problem out and to sort it out efficiently and in a manner in which the consumer is not affected and to the farmer is not affected is something which we'll have to see you see in so far as the apmc has uh, been formed the act itself uh, this had a specific purpose hmm. and uh, to some extent it has uh, served its purpose the uh, provisions of the apc apmc have over the years uh, reduced exploitation largely hmm. because prior to that exploitation was uh, very rampant extremely rampant and nobody can uh, say that you know apmc need not have uh, uh, you know had to be maintained in the very same manner we have no difficulty with that the point is that if the bjp today aims at uh, creating better structures we have really no problem hmm. because in so far as uh, the, the farmer gets a better deal and in so far as the consumer gets a better deal it's perfect but uh, i i don't know because you see uh, ju- just as uh, the modi sarkar was coming before the 16th of may they had promised that uh, uh, everything would be available at uh, you know rock bottom prices and suddenly we find that uh, the rates of onions and uh, potatoes have shot up 
and virtually every sector including petrol including diesel the uh, railway rates have increased so this is all going to uh, essentially affect the consumer in mm. one way or another mm. Mm. and uh, today to say that no no we had we uh, uh, our only agenda was to keep prices down you know proved to be a complete uh, red herring mm. and uh, mr modi uh, is today guilty of misleading the nation in that uh, light okay. but I, i i we can only hope for the best and we can hope that you know the uh, consumers get a better deal and the farmers get a better deal in the whole process i'm going to get no, mj khan to respond to that yeah respond making, to it respond no, no, that that's a direct attack no, making against sweeping you. remarks i think we cannot stop the congress uh, gentleman we can use any words but look at the sincerity of the government government is not going to be uh, controlled by the traders mm. and that is what the statement of mr jetley mm. makes it very very loud and clear mm. two things have to be understood one if the price rise is linked to some kind of speculation some kind of sentiments or is there a real situation of shortage mm. or is there cartelization that is taking place mm. some traders or the government has come down so heavily on that and all these intervention that could have been possible have already been taken with a sense of urgency mm. now making such a statement i uh, do not know that uh, why no, the, the, uh, the statement, gentleman is making no yeah. the no the statement no, 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 the moving uh, no the, the going ahead no let me let me uh, clarify what statement i made see the statement i made was directly what the, the today's prime minister had said and said that you know price rise is linked to corruption hmm. right so we can assume today safely that the 16th of may was the end of corruption hmm. right Hmm. in terms of what the bjp had promised hmm. so today the bjp has come to power 16th since the 16th of may there is no corruption but why are prices increasing it is the beginning that's, that's what the, everybody what okay. wishes to know okay. it is the because, beginning because of the end mr. of corruption mr tajmul haq wants to come in mr tajmul haq wants to come in and make a point go ahead i think i need to intervene because magic stick there is no magic let me make a point let me make a point i want to make it a point saying that there should be no politics in this this is a very serious issue if we are discussing a pmc or inflation these are all serious issues mm. so there should be no politics in mm. this second thing is as, as, as things have started i think the government is in the right direction as, as i should say mm. this, i am not a politician mm. but i can say that if you are talking about you know you know trying to control hoarders and speculators in preventing food price inflation or if you are talking about some you know uh, investment in the uh, agriculture marketing mm. particularly for development of markets and things like that this will help but the most most important in thing is in this respect i will say that uh, this is not a very simple kind of thing mm. like in bihar and kerala there is no marketing uh, act as Perfect. such it is a free kind of thing but still things are not improving there because government or has not created any marketing infrastructure alternative marketing infrastructure and at the same time they have not creating an enabling an environment mm. for the private investors to invest in agriculture marketing there so there is a serious problem similarly not that we have not amended or made any reforms for the last few years in fact i remember 16 states have already made some kind of reforms like but where now, does the problem lie where does the problem lie these reforms were made where does the problem lie the problem lies in two places mm. one is that you have not made the necessary rules because mm. of some vested interest mm. West, even in punjab and haryana mm. if they have not done so basically because there are some vested interest mm. there mm. so those vested interest have to be curbed mm. this is one secondly you need to encourage private markets investment in pri- private mm. markets so mm. developments and for that you know, it is not just development of markets you know small scale markets or terminal markets but all the whole chains like go down storage facility okay. transportation facilities those are the things which are missing unless you emphasize on those uh, still there will be problems so if, even if you have surplus production here if it cannot go to karnataka for some reasons mm. karnataka people will still suffer mm. so that is what happened i tell you in uh, 2008 i visited dodavallapur in you know very mm. close to there the farmers were not getting any price for their tomato it was hardly 1 rupee there and in uh, 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 bangalore it was 3 rupees and delhi at the same time it was 15 rupees a kilo why should it happen if there is a proper system mm. so india should be one market for all the agricultural commodities for which you need a whole some infrastructure developed and for that you need public investment you need private investment you need a group of entrepreneurs okay. some kind of linkages to be established and a proper policy framework and that is what should be the direction of the you know given by okay indeed of course we're going to continue talking about uh, this very thing and talk about the way forward as well and what needs to be done so as to uh, ensure that the farmer benefits and also the consumer is the ultimate benefiter of course we'll slip into a short break now but we'll continue talking about this on the other side do stay tuned we'll be right back
Welcome back. You're watching the big picture on Rajya Sabha television. Well, before we went to the went into the break, of course, British Kalapa was talking about how the BJP government has not been able to bring down or control inflation. And we also had uh, Mr. Tajamul Haq talking about how the government is heading in the right direction. I'm going to take these two points uh, uh, to Himanshu Watts, of course, and see what he thinks about this. Himanshu. Okay. <coughs> A uh, couple of other points also, you know, the reason APMC has become such a big issue is obviously the food inflation. And, you know, this is just one of the instruments which the government needs to tackle. Mm. Uh, you know, one should not lose sight of a very fundamental aspect and that is the real productivity of agriculture in India. You know, whether it's fruit, vegetable or crops, productivity in India is abysmal. It is really low. And the reason... You know, these traders or holders or black marketeers, they are able to manipulate prices at times because the basic demand supply equation is not very good. So, you know, you have to start with that basic thing. You've got to do what you can to improve productivity, to in improve farm practices. That is one. Second, the other, my other problem with this focus on APMC is that it completely demonizes the trader. Mm. And that really is not the case, you know. Uh, you know, whether you look at trade, you look at big industry or, you know, any part of economic activity, the motive for profit is pretty much there. And, you know, <coughs> very often in much more sophisticated business dealings, the motive of profit and the actual exploitation and inflationary practices are pretty much higher. So my suggestion is, you know, APMC should not be seen totally in isolation as there's a horrible set of traders who are exploiting the farmers who are eating fat margins. Right. Uh, APMC is one of the way to deal with it, but simultaneously there has to be very serious efforts to, in, you know, increase farm productivity, improve irrig irrigation facilities, and it's it's all pretty much doable. You know, it it needs a sincere coordinate, coordinated effort. Indeed, it is and the doable. The other point of course. is, you know, one hears of APMC and such measures. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, you know, j just one more point. You know. One, one hears of all these measures only when there's a price spike. You know, mm. there's been a very weak rainfall in June mm. and suddenly there's been a spike in food prices. And my fear is if, you know, if it rains okay for a couple of months and prices are stabilized, then the world will forget about it. Okay. And traders is will get back to their old practices. <laughs> so, so this whole campaign has to be sustained, not only at the crisis point. You know, okay. the, these things one has heard in the past, as soon as the crisis blows over, everybody forgets. That, that of so, course, is the responsibility of the uh, government. Don't the forget point. about it in the future. I mean, right now the prices are increasing, so okay, all the attention is on it. But soon, I mean, the prices are going to come down eventually and then everyone's going to mm -hmm. forget about it, is what he's saying. Uh, I agree with uh, him that uh, uh, long-term view has to be taken. And let me say uh, that unless agriculture is brought under the concurrent list of the constitution, mm. many of the central legislations, the states uh, uh, do not comply. Yes, for that's, example, that's another challenge, isn't it? Example, because uh, APMC uh, is a state issue really correct. and not much that the center can do. For example, marketing reforms, Uttar Pradesh government consistently refused any kind of reforms. So, unless this agriculture is uh, brought under the central, uh, not central, concurrent list at least, not mm. central list, or at least the post-production, the entire range of activities that can be grouped into one and brought under either central list or under concurrent list, mm. then many of the uh, uh, measures that the central government envisages in order to ex accelerate the exports, the agro-processing, the marketing reforms, that will be possible to do. Now, I again very much appreciate uh, the previous speaker's intervention that if you are looking at uh, the two, uh, key, two key concerns, one is that the consumer's interests are to be protected and farmers at the same time should get a remunerative price of their produce. Then agriculture yields have to be encouraged, uh, increased. Uh, if you look at uh, most of the crops, uh, Indian uh, average yields are anywhere between 42% to 65% in most crops compared to the global average. Now, there is a lot of possibility of taking that close to 60% of the world average and gradually close to the world average itself or in some cases better than the world average uh, comparable with the uh, top five. Uh, losses in agriculture, production sites are too huge. In fact, 2002 report is there of the Ministry of Chemicals and mm. Fertilizers which says 90,000 crores worth of agriculture produced is eaten away by the uh, pests and rats. Now, that figure may be today 150,000 crore plus. That has to be stopped. Post production losses are there anywhere between 8 to 35 percent post production losses. If that is controlled, 
those losses are reduced, then that much margin can be distributed between producer mm. and the consumer. What is required today is that options are to be created. Yes. Mandis and APMC Act still have the relevance. They have their uh, role in place. Uh, I again agree with that, uh, the previous speaker, that any institution, unless there is a monopoly, if it is surviving, it is surviving because it is playing some role. Mm. As long as any institution plays some role, it survives and it gets uh, flourished and patronized. But look at the Andhra Pradesh. It, and it is playing that. a role, but what kind of a it role is, is it playing really is no, the question. Ideally, I mean, if of course, are, there are so many, so many institutions that play roles, but then not necessarily that those roles are right. Those roles re, uh, remain relevant and they survive as long as they serve some purpose of the hmm. society. No, no, when they see, cease see, to Mr. serve Mr. the purpose, Mr. Huck doesn't they agree die. with you. Mr. Hmm. Huck doesn't there agree with you. There are two, you. three things which need to be very specifically said is that the kind of restrictive practices that are followed in the regulated markets have to go. Otherwise, that does not create a proper environment for the farmers to sell and get their due. You talk of remunerative price, but if you know there is taxes, levies, and things like that at the mandates for the farmers, farmers lose. So farmers do not have the incentive to produce more. Mm. You talk of uh, enabling them to produce more, but at the same time there are things which are you know curbing those incentives. So first of all, I say there should be adequate marketing facilities both in the public and private sector. Okay. Let them work in a competitive manner, and then this multiplicity of taxes and levies should go. Then alternative marketing system be developed. That's Contact a long-term plan, of course. Yeah, That's yeah. a long-term plan, and that, that it remains to be seen how that particular plan is no, implemented. No, no, no. The point is already there are, say for instance, some of the acts have already allowed contract mm. farming, say mm. for instance. Yes, they have. But yes. then they have not framed proper rules so that it functions smoothly. Yes. So those, some of the small things have to be, uh, you know, done now. Certainly. Let me bring Brijesh Kalapa into the picture now. Of course, Arun Jaitley, we spoke about food inflation earlier and Arun Jaitley uh, just a couple of days ago, in fact, came and said that uh, uh, fruits and vegetables should be delisted from the APMC. Just by doing that, will it really curb inflation? Well, we have our doubts on that, but uh, the, what steps the government will have to take, we are, uh, uh, we are, we are going to fully uh, support them. But as I said, this is the caveat. The caveat is that the consumer is benefited, one, and two, the producer is benefited. Mm. But uh, there was a long uh, uh, you know, a list of uh, to-dos which the BJP spokesman just mentioned. But you see, ultimately, we are moving more and more into an age where there will be lesser and lesser people in rural India mm. and more and more people in urban India. Mm. So this has to be kept in mind. One, mechanization, eventually. Because ju just as you know, there is going to be atrophy from the st villages to into the cities. So there has to be larger mechanization and how uh, greater production is enabled, one. And two, to have a proper grid like we have in, th in the power sector, mm. we have to have a proper grid where uh, facilities move easily and this will also have to have a massive uh, you know a, a ma massive inflow of uh, infrastructure and such others is that see. lacking at the moment is that lacking at the no, moment no, the, the, the upa had done uh, enormous work in this direction today if a farmer is to find out readily in a, in an instant what kind of uh, produce he, he should choose mm. on his farmlands. Mm. Then it's available to, at, the, at a call. All mm. he has to do is make a call. Mm. You see, so this kind of ready f available, uh, um, you know, methods were made available by the UPA. And the, the uh, whole idea is this. The whole idea is to see that in, in a future, in the future, if a produce is like uh, Dr. Huck just pointed out, if, he's, if the farmer is just getting one rupee, and if the same produce is available in Delhi at 15 rupees, the point is to be able to bridge that gap. Mm. And this has been the whole purpose of the UPA's agriculture program. Mm. And, you know, this will, of course, I don't know if the BJP will, you know, continue in this uh, light, but this has really been the thought process behind the whole thing. And okay. Le let's see how the, f what the future holds. No, UPA announced one good policy that was of establishing terminal markets. Mm. Unfortunately, none of them could be successful. That is a good concept. I still believe in that. If they are successfully operationalized, then I think a whole lot of problems can be addressed. But one important announcement in the manifesto of BJP was starting the agri uh, rails from the production centers to the main uh, market. For example, uh, many vegetables uh, uh, production centers in Bihar. From there on a daily basis, if a train comes and brings those vegetables to Delhi, the whole lot of middlemen can be curtailed in mm. between. And 
uh, therefore the you know uh, prices uh, producers can get better prices and consumer will have to pay less uh, andhra pradesh when uh, previous uh, tenor chandrababu naidu he started a wonderful concept called the raitu bazar hmm. whereby from farmer side on a daily basis the uh, early morning time when the uh, state roadways buses were free they were put into service and some incentivization to the drivers and conductors that you bring all that uh, produce from the villages and very early morning uh, on the outskirts of the city uh, you know temporarily that market yards were laid down uh, such kind of uh, things can be encouraged uh, in major cities of the country but what is important is that private sector has to come forward and play more important role for that contract farming laws have to be formulated mm. Uh, because fair enough. Uh, fair, enough. Uh, yeah. fair enough. Let's talk about something that uh, that uh, Bridges Kalapa raised a uh, short while ago about inflation and generally on the whole the general beat or the mood I'm getting from the ground. In, for instance, my driver or for that matter the 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 uh, the Delhi Metro Transport Corporation uh, uh, guys or I mean the bus conductors and bus drivers, their grouse is that after the BJP has come to power, the prices have only gone up. why is it that the bjp is not able to control inflation at the moment because that i'm bringing that up again, i'm bringing that up again because that was one of your main points oh, on your agenda the answer is there see none of these crops which are causing the food inflation currently with the onion or potato they are hmm. ready to harvest this only the stock whose distribution redistribution pricing holding all that has to be looked into hmm. these are the administrative measures which have already been announced and hmm. being enforced hmm. so once the crop estimates are available and fresh crop produce starts coming in the market then prices will go crazy so so up. so if it doesn't happen in the uh, near future are you going to then blame it on we cannot, on the drought we are can, you going to blame no, it on the drought we, and say no we, we didn't I, get adequate I, rainfall so that's why probably we'll this is happened uh, see okay. exports have already been hmm. uh, restricted hmm. now imports will increase supposing the crop estimates are going to be less than what we expect hmm. the requirement of the country hmm. okay yeah uh, no, i i don't really like to make this point uh, frank that you see in in so far as what the bjp had promised the f- the first thing they said that you no know, prices are a main issue mm. you'll see those huge holdings of mr modi where he said that no i'm going to bring the prices down mm. and this is what he had promised now it's re- nearly been 40 days and prices have only been going up and they've not been going down the other promise was we are going to get this huge cash of fund from swiss banks uh, let, and let, this, let, is, this is going to make this is going but to back to the bjp's defense the prices of onions last year were 100 rupees at this very time whereas now it's about 35 or 40 rupees so that in that sense the bjp still has the upper hand no no for, uh, no it was not it was not 100 rupees it was, it, it was 100 rupees sometime in september if i recall no, no, 200 you, you points see, we are making the <laughs> available at 20 rupees a kg hmm. no that was being done by the chila dikshit government also yes. but never at 20 rupees it was still at 60 65 no, rupees no, no, or so no no but you see the point is that the holders hmm. okay and the traders we all know I think I don't need to mention our uh, in whose pocket they were. I don't need to mention this. Mm. So naturally, you know, the, the, during election time, uh, these holders had let loose, and to see to it that maximum damage is inflicted. So it's a conspiracy, you're saying? You no, see, no, I don't want to specify further because this is Raj Sabha TV, and you you are known for your very uh, illuminating programs. I don't want to specify mm. further. No, but we all know what the truth is. Please be very clear. BJP's policies are not going to be prisoner to any kind of vested interests. Okay, okay. I think I I I think we you, you both both the political parties have made their points there. Let let me get the neutral person of the show, of course, Mr. Thakur. Where you wanted to say something? I think in general, whenever even a small scarcity or some problem is there, hoarders and speculators play a very important role in fueling this kind of inflation, food price inflation. Mm. This is one. Secondly, I mean, you see the overall from 2000, say I will say from 1999 to 2003, the average food price inflation was just 4 to 5 percent. Subsequently, I think uh, my uh, friends should know. that uh, the food price inflation was of the uh, range of 10% to 16% sometimes yes. 18% yes and uh, in the case of onion particularly comes quite often this kind of thing and onion is a part of polit indian has been a part of indian politics mm. for various regions mm. and then uh, but the point is there are also problems with our production and distribution system yes. if the production takes place in different you know well spread all over the country not necessarily depending only on uh, nasik then probably this kind of problem will not arise okay so you're quickly out of time on the show so i'm but i'm going to let uh, himanshu what's have the last word on the show <coughs> himanshu was please close the show for us okay <coughs> see a couple of points <coughs> one I, w- i want to comment on this <coughs> political bickering we had you know whether bjp can control prices immediately i think uh, bjp 
has raised too high expectations for immediate uh, benefits and i think if every side of the political spectrum knows that you know if, even if they are doing a very good job they need a few months maybe mm. a year to really make a difference mm. uh, i think they raised the expectations too high i want to make one more point on the original topic of you know food prices and apmc and what needs to be done in the farms uh, one very important thing is <coughs> you know you need to have very good storage facilities and <coughs> you have to give farmers the ability to hold on to their produce i will tell you what what i mean you know supposing a farmer knows that 3 months from now due to certain reasons prices are going to go up hmm. but today you have a situation he cannot store his grain and the others they are so indebted that they are waiting for the day they can harvest so that they can settle their debts now in that these are the kind of situations where middlemen thrive <clears throat> you know so these middlemen will thrive whether you have apmc or not okay. unless you do basic things to increase farm productivity which you know not just compared to us and china even egypt you know which is on a comparable level of development <clears throat> we are half of egypt in many 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 commodities in the farms so it there has to be an overall approach where you look at productivity you look at uh, post harvest technology you look at storage cold right. storage and allow farmers to hang on to their crop where they can get better price maybe later instead of the middleman doing it all right completely out of time with the completely out of time on the show so yeah, i'll have to cut you short there of course uh, himanshu what's thank you so much for your inputs as far as what needs to be done and the way forward is concerned probably another idea is of course uh, uh, farmers markets in large towns in cities new york city in fact has a farmers market and many farmers markets of course where the where the farmers directly come and sell to the consumer maybe that's the way forward as well Thank you so much for watching. I'd like to thank my guests as well at this point in time. Tajamul Haq, Himanshu Watts, MJ Khan and Rajesh Kalapa. Thank you so much gentlemen for being a part of the big picture this evening. Thank you so much for watching. Good night.